We saw in film two that we could estimate the effect on an economy of changes in income, on consumption and on saving. We considered countries that have joined the EU in recent years that have typically lower incomes than the group that they've joined. Slovenia is the richest of these countries that have joined recently. Its 2 million people have an average annual income adjusted for prices of around 18,000 euros. If it succeeds in growing at an annual rate of 4% for the next two years, average income will be rather higher. But how will that growth in income affect consumption and saving? To governments, this might be a very crucial question. If consumption increases, what's the economic effect? Will the extra consumption demand feed through into higher inflation? Will some of the extra demand be spent on imported goods? and therefore create problems with the balance of payments? Or will there be only a small increase in savings, in which case will investment firms find it hard to get the necessary funds in order to increase investment? So we need to know how changes in income affect consumption and savings. But the problem, as we saw in film two, is that sometimes a linear relationship between income and consumption doesn't accurately reflect reality. We can sometimes improve the fit if we have a consumption function that's non-linear. But how do we estimate the effect on consumption and on saving of a change in income now? Well, it's really not that difficult. We use differential calculus. Here we use differential calculus to work out the change in consumption that might result from a change in income in Slovenia. Let's look at the consumption function. It may well be non-linear. We'll base our calculations on a consumption function where C consumption is 0.01y squared plus 0.1y plus 20. All figures are in millions of euros. A national income in Slovenia we can find easily there are about 2 million people there and they have an average income of 18,000 euros per head annually. So that gives us a total national income of 36 billion euros. Let's find the marginal propensity to consume. To find this, we differentiate C with respect to Y. DC by DY equals 0.02y plus 0.1. Now since current y is 36, the marginal propensity to consume is 0.02 times 36 plus 0.1, which equals 0.82. Now the marginal propensity to consume plus the marginal propensity to save must be 1. So if MPC equals 0.82, MPS must be 0.18. Now we'll think about what will happen to that if we have a rising income level. If incomes are to rise at about 4% per annum, in Slovenia, which seems reasonable given the trend, then in two years' time it will be that y equals 36 times 1.04 squared, which gives us 38.94 to two decimal places. So we now know the new level of national income in Slovenia. Now let's work out the new marginal propensity to consume. DC by DY equals 0.02 times 38.94 plus 0.1, which equals 0.88. So if 0.88 is the marginal propensity to consume, the marginal propensity to save is 1 minus 0.88, which equals 0.12.
down from the 0.18 that it was two years earlier. So to the extent that this represents Slovenian consumption accurately, we can predict that a rise in income would cause a fall in the marginal savings ratio. So we can use calculus to provide an idea of small changes in income on consumption for any economy at any income level if we have an idea of the consumption function.